uh, when you hear the word diabetes, what do you think of? I think of uh, a disorder where the body cannot metabolize um, sugar, um, and uh, there's some going on with the insulin um, that, that that's produced. So, and there's two types of diabetes from what I from what I understand. Okay, and what about? Tell me a little bit about what your experience with diabetes has been. Okay. Um, when I was in college, my first experience was with one of my friends. Um, she had to um, inject something in her stomach um, mm -hmm. area. And my father-in-law has um, the um, type A diabetes. Okay. Type 2? Yeah, type 2. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But, and what doesn't have to have insulin? Oh, no, and he, has, he has the worst. I'm sorry. He has the worst kind. Okay. Of diabetes, the one that he has to take daily injection, injections of insulin. Okay. All right. So that would be type 1. Type 1. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually. Yeah. Uh, sometimes type, people with type 2 also have to take insulin. Mm -hmm. but, but people with type 1 always have to take insulin. Mm -hmm. um, have you been around and watched their lifestyle? Um, I, I just hanging around my group of friends in Columbus, Mississippi. Um, I. Um, I hung around um, her um, because, she, because we were all in a network of friends, and I just saw the daily um, injections that he that she needed, and also just um, being around um, my father-in-law that he um, his his lifestyle has, has changed. Like he has to be conscious of of his like he has to take his blood sh um, sugar level um, every time he eats mm -hmm. and um, act accordingly mm -hmm. with, with the numbers. Do you have diabetes in your family? No. No. Neither mother or father's mm -hmm. side. There's no record of diabetes in my family. You're a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those lucky people. What do you think uh, causes the diabetes? I think that um, the high fructose corn syrup that's been in a lot of uh, soft drinks and it's been in a lot of the uh, uh, sweeteners because the, it, it's cheaper because mm -hmm. the corn industry has um, has subsidized a lot of that, and they, they transferred it over to to a sweetener. And um, fructose is not a natural sugar uh, to be taken in in enormous amounts. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I think that the high fructose corn syrup is one of the main co contributors to diabetes. Okay, and it's in everything. Yes, yes, and, and a lot of companies there, like like we buy bread that says no high fructose corn syrup, peanut butter. Like if, if there's um, labels on that say no high fructose corn syrup because everybody is is waking up to that fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are risks for diabetes in the community? Yes, yes, there is. There is. What kinds of things do you think are the problem? Um, a lot of people in Knoxby County is low income, and um, therefore their eating choices are limited because they're low income and. The cheaper the food is, the more high fructose corn syrup there is, the more refined sugars there are, and um, and sometimes there's no choice but to but to consume those those mm -hmm. foods, and um, <clears throat> the obesity rate is is pretty high around here, and that also is a con contributor, um, and um, because of all that, and then and then we got the McDonald's that opened up. <laughs> I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So well, have you um, been? No, oh, I've been there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a confessional. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but definitely, there's there's risk in this county for it. Uh, if a person has diabetes, what do you think are the most important things they need to do to keep the disease under control? Um, they need to radically alter their diet. Um, um, be careful about what they intake. Um, they need to. Um, you know, do research, study up on what exact what type they have, and um, how to. And if they don't take care of themselves, the consequences of, of that. Mm -hmm. And and just to just to watch what they eat from 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 this point on. Mm -hmm. so. uh, what do you think family can do to help support somebody that has diabetes? Um, keep them accountable with what they eat. Um, you know. Maybe on Thanksgiving or Christmas or, or select days, there's, there's nothing wrong with, with consuming those foods, but there has to be great accountability um, with regards to that. And, and that's pretty much all I mean, all we can do, mm -hmm. um, just to encourage them, you know, I, I think that you're eating too much of this, or I think that you might not want to 
eat that. Um, you might want to um, exercise a little more and just just don't tell them what to do, but just to encourage them mm -hmm. and just let them know that we care about them. It's a fine line sometimes between yes. giving support and nagging. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. how to avoid being a nag. Yes. Is a... And kind of make it um, seem like it's their idea that they're doing it and getting them compliments for it. Noticing positives. Yeah. <laughs> Not just the negatives. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, what um, What do you think might be useful to think about doing in the larger community to prevent diabetes? Okay. Uh, for the children, to for the schools to have campaigns where they're aware of of what um, what causes diabetes. Um, like I've seen on the news several times about how much sugar um, kids consume, and it's like two and a half jars a week of sugar and for them to look at how much sugar is inside their soft drinks a lot of them drink soft drinks and then and then start with the kids and then um you know just to have banners or have one of those um, bullet, um poster board areas mm -hmm. uh, about to express concerns of diabetes um to uh, maybe the um uh, you know may maybe pamphlets can be um, put it inside grocery stores with the management's position mm -hmm. uh, permission to mm -hmm. to uh, for, to be accessible. The churches around here that, that that's a big area where um, diabetes education can be done because everybody goes to a church mm -hmm. around here and just let them be aware of the dangers and what I said dangers of, of high fructose corn syrup first and foremost, but then all sugars, mm -hmm. all sugars second. Mm -hmm. If um, <clears throat> If we wanted to, to motivate people, you know, uh, sometimes it's, we get the ideas of things we need to do, but how do you mobilize people to get busy and do those things? Especially when you don't have yeah. always a lot of money. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> testimonies can be done to willing people that, um, that have diabetes, saying that, look, I have diabetes. This is what I go through every day. This is, um, and, and and just for them to admit as much as they want to admit, mm -hmm. and then others um, like anybody, any family members who's willing to, to give testimonies about uh, people that passed on as a result of diabetes, saying mm -hmm. this is what we went through. This is all mm -hmm. the work that we had to do, and and this can be prevented. Um, and then and, and, and then use that as a as a prevention mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then um, the third thing is just general education, just before um, anything happens. And and you're teaching in uh, public schools, yes. and so you see children, mm -hmm. junior high, yes. younger probably yes. as well. Uh, what are you seeing in the children? Um, a lot of children are oblivious to what they're eating. And what I do, uh, whenever they have their snack time, I say, can we look at the nutrition contents, look at this, this, and this. That's not healthy for you and you shouldn't be eating it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I don't really eat a lot of that stuff, and I just tell them that, that they, they don't need to be eating or drinking all that. And, and, and this year, um, you know, uh, as I say, drink their juices or their pops or whatever, and then I'm going to, you know, just educate them a little bit mm -hmm. about, about the high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. So you could make a math lesson out of yes, the yes, it, sugar. Yes, and, 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 and that's another thing that I can do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. So that creates a different kind of awareness. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, are you seeing many children overweight or obese? Yes, yes. Um, the incoming seventh grade population, <laughs> there's a lot of them in there. Is that right? Yes, yeah, that's something that we all notice then. Um, but I'm going to talk to my principal about what can we do to um, help manage that. and. Um, bless it. We have a health, healthy foods um, initiative from the from the federal government that we need to implement, and we for a bit. But I'm not really sure how healthy those foods are, the cafeteria foods, and a lot of them have refined sugars in there, and I don't mm -hmm. know if that really helps out with the matter. So, do you have influence with the other teachers? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. So sometimes, sometimes teachers aren't as zealous as you might be mm -hmm. about those kinds of things. Yes. So how do we how do we get this information to the teachers so then they can relay it to the students or again, I, I think through pamphlets, um, some of them will you'll sit down and, and you can have a conversation with them, but others will will think that you're trying to be better than them or be over them or and I, I think if if they choose to pick up a pamphlet and read it then I think mm -hmm. that would be a, a better route to go with them. 
and then maybe some of those uh, teachers have family members who have diabetes or they know that they, their f family has a history of diabetes mm -hmm. and then they really might want to pay attention. The other thing is, do, do you see uh, teachers that are, themselves are overweight? Or mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. that's a challenge then to mm -hmm. being a role model. If yes. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Do you hear the teachers talking about? Uh, no, not that much. Yeah, not that yeah, much. But they have a concern. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> are you? You mentioned the school lunches. Or mm -hmm. um, do the do the kids get? Do you ever eat? Do you eat the school no. lunches? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but you go in the cafeteria. Yes. So you see what see yes. what they're being served. Yes. Um, do you see green vegetables at <clears throat> yes, all? Yes. I do. You do see some. Yes, they do get a serving of vegetables every day. Okay. Well, <clears throat> one of the other uh, people I interviewed today mm -hmm. mentioned the fact that there uh, was a difference between if you got to the lunchroom early mm -hmm. versus if you got to the lunchroom that's late. That's true. I, I believe that's true. That they run out of things yes. sometimes, and so you may not have those choices. Yes, yes. They, they, they do run out sometimes. Okay. Of those, and the choices are limited. Think there's anything that could be done about that? Um, the, the teachers in the morning time have to submit their attendance correctly, and then that that that'll eliminate a lot of the problems. A lot of times, the teachers do not, or the students come in late. Like we might have an influx of 50 students that come in later after the attendance is done, and mm. students need to go to the office, and, and then that way the correct tally can be given to the cafeteria people that can cook the right amount of food. Okay, okay, uh, and. Um, what about physical education? What's yeah. happening there? Um, like at the middle school, we've had a problem of um, of physical education. The physical edu edu education teachers weren't physically fit themselves, so they didn't make the students do a lot of physical fitness. But we've had um, the, the the teacher this year was pretty good, and he and he made the students go out there, run, uh, have a lot of rigorous you know, vigorous mm -hmm. activity out there. So. So, so, so we're we're getting things going with that, but with the with the fifth and sixth grade, um, I think my principal is going to incorporate twenty minutes of, of recess this year. Every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every every day. Yes. Yes. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, do kids get fidgety in class? Um, they do. Um, uh, in in some people's classes, because some people's te some teachers will not allow their students to talk. And I don't believe that at all. You know, I believe the students need to talk, or they're going to um, cause problems. Mm -hmm. But um, but they also some of them eat some junk before they go in there, and they become fidgety. And, and then some of the students they don't have anything to eat at home, so they have to eat at the school. Right. So, but yeah, but some of them do get fidgety. But uh, but th that that depends on what the teacher's doing for the most part, I believe. And, and what about uh, vending machines? Uh, we do not have any vending machines that's accessible to the students. They're 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 banned from the teachers' lounge. So so we don't have that. But no. do they sneak in? Um, well, if they sneak in, then the teacher that that was that was over them will get in big trouble. Mm. So so we, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's amazing what children can figure yeah. out how to do how to do that. Mm -hmm. Do some of the kids bring lunches? Do you notice that? Um, that? no, most of the students don't bring their lunches. Okay. And um, the I know I'm spending a lot of time on this. Yeah, but that's I, fine. It's, it's, that's uh, fine. Uh, uh, some of the schools they give things like chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. and, is that what you see? Yes. Or do you see yes. really cooked food? Probably two or three days out of the week they'll get um, fried foods. Um, sometimes it's three days out of the week, sometimes it's two. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they get hot dogs, pizza, uh, french fries. So, mm -hmm. so, so there's a variety of foods in there that, that's not nutritious. Yeah. Do they Back home where I'm from, they mm -hmm. often serve pizza and French fries together. Yeah, you see that. Sometimes that's that 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 that's done. Yeah, mm -hmm. and chili and peanut butter sandwiches. Um, I I really haven't <laughs> seen. Yeah, I really haven't seen, seen that. that. No. <laughs> that's a standard where I come from. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny because um, uh, everybody if mm -hmm. they make. If you eat chili, mm -hmm. everybody wants peanut butter sandwiches because oh, okay. they all learned at school uh -huh. growing, their, growing wow. up. Wow. Okay. You got a funny thing. <laughs> uh, 
What do you think the most important thing people need to know um, about diabetes is? Um, I think the most important thing is <clears throat> 50, 60 years ago, a lot of people didn't have diabetes. But now, um, you know, the, the, it, it grew exponentially. So something happened. And I think that um, the diet is, or the con food consumption is the main thing that people need to be aware of. And uh, in order for companies to, to save money and then, and, and then make more money, they, they're, go they're gonna come up with cheaper products and, and then that's destroying a lot of people's health. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the, the junk food has refined sugars in there. Um, you know, and one of the main ingredients is high fructose corn syrup. And I think that they need to be aware of that and then, and then you know, limit the consumption of, of all those foods. Mm -hmm. So, because that, that's what I did when I when I read up on all that and I said, okay, we're not gonna, uh, you know, our house isn't gonna have a lot of this stuff in there. Mm -hmm. so. Do you have a, in your in your um, healthcare coverage, do you have a wellness policy? Yes. Prevention? Mm -hmm. with, the, with the school, do you yes. have any incentives? Um, I, th uh, I don't, th I'm not sure. Um, I I, if you don't smoke or if you yeah. keep your weight in the normal range, do yeah. you get a reduced Yeah, rate well, well we, get, we get a $1,000 benefit towards something. Like if we have to take a health, health wellness survey and then they'll give me a score. So. Mm -hmm. But I've only done that once. But, we're, but the uh, central office encourages us to do it every year so mm -hmm. that we can receive a $1,000 benefit in case we need to go, go get checked. So that's a positive. Yes, it, it, is. it is. Is it stressed by the school? For, you know, it for is. everyone? It yes, is. yes. Okay. Like they give us emails, they tell us to, you know, go to the website, take the survey so you can get your $1,000 credit mm -hmm. so that you can get, uh, in case you need to uh, mm -hmm. go to the doctor. Okay. Um, is there anything I really didn't ask you about that you think is kind of important to... No. Okay. The, uh, I do have one uh, last okay. question and that's that's about, um, you can grow up here. Mm -mm. Right, so you came from where was my th my parents were in the Air Force, so my dad was in the Air Force, so we, I've been around a whole lot of places. But I grew up in in Florida and Hawaii. That's the two main places I grew up. Okay, so when you came here to not 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 to be yeah, well <laughs> we I, I we moved to Columbus after Hawaii, so so I've been I started there first in right. Mississippi, area. then I went to Starkville, and then Knox County. Uh -huh. So. And, and and so, what kinds of different things do you notice here from other places that you've lived? Um, regards to, regards that to might this. be risks. Yeah. Well, um, I, I notice that there's the the, the, the fried foods and uh, like junk foods everywhere, but 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 the diet is definitely different around here because um, like in Florida, I don't really see a lot of obese people, mm -hmm. and then in Hawaii. There were uh, people like like people Samoans that that were big, yes. but but it, they weren't unhealthy big. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I moved over here, then then you know that that was one of the first things I noticed. I was you know just saying that there, there's a lot of a lot of overweight people <laughs> in in Mississippi. So mm -hmm. and then and then later on I found out that Mississippi is one of the most obese mm -hmm. states mm -hmm. in the nation. So. It's really hard to change patterns of behavior. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, getting the, the the community leaders on yes. board can be a challenge. Do you have any suggestions on ways to go about that? Um, well, I, no other than people studying history that 50, 60 years ago, people probably ate just as bad back then, but they weren't obese, and then something happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but 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 if they do raise that issue, then then the corn industry will start sending their uh, lawyers out and saying that no, this stuff doesn't really do that. What mm -hmm. you're saying. So, but um, but other than that, just the the, the leaders can just educate, saying that um, they need to live, they need to practice that first, and then tell everybody else that um, saying that we need to um, live healthier, and and, and kind of let them know that. If you eat healthier, you won't make as many trips to the hospital. You'll save money there. You'll save money with the food. You know, you'll you'll feel better. So I guess they can go on, on the grounds of you know you could save money by mm -hmm. by by being healthier. Because mm -hmm. when you're if you have diabetes, then you have to keep on spending money if you don't have insurance to um, to get the uh, insulin shots or 
insulin medication. Excellent. Thank okay. you. All right. <laughs>